Okay, we're here in South East London in Newcross SE14 and we're going to give you a quick tour around Sandford Housing Cooperative which is one of the oldest housing co-ops in London. It's fully independent, set up in the early mid-70s, 1973 or 4 or something like that. Um, I'm starting outside so you can have a quick look at the uh, solar hot water systems that they've got on this side of the roof. So Sandford starts there and it's this whole row of houses and we'll go and have a quick walk round inside. So it was Sandford was originally set up as cooperative student housing but it's now housing for anyone really. Um, uh, it was set up to provide affordable housing for people that live in London temporarily studying here or working here. Single people that found it otherwise too expensive to live in London. So here we are. This is the uh, entrance to their car park and now garden. So we'll start with the famous mural. This is a classic famous London mural. We've got lots of political symbolism in there. And here, this is what's referred to as House Zero, which is a new porter cabin. There are 14 houses, one to 14, and now this has become House Zero. And what's really fascinating about this is that they've, they've created a self-watering bed in front of it, which harvests rainwater on, from the roof, stores it in that water back there, and then there's a bullcock, which uh, adjusts the level of the water below the beds. And we'll hear more about that a bit later. Um, but yeah, these are self-watering beds, which seem to be doing very nicely. Um, I lived here about, I moved out of Sanford about two years ago, and two years ago, this house wasn't here, and all of this new garden, as you can see here, they've just got started preparing, was all car parks, so it's changed quite a lot in the last uh, couple of years. There's a uh, polytunnel, a little polytunnel under there with more self-watering gardening experiments. And let's take you down, walk you down the street. Here's house one. Lots of greenery as you can see. It's a little oasis in an otherwise fairly industrial area. This is actually an almond tree, which does fruit. You can see it's got a few starting to fruit there. There's lots of other fruit trees on the street. So yeah, this is the communal garden. Each house, each pair of houses, you can see these uh, tall chimneys coming out of the cupboards. There's a wood chip boiler for each pair of houses, which provides all of the hot water and heating, which is also supplemented by the solar hot water that we showed you a moment ago. We've got lots of compost bins. Some raised beds here. People growing various salads and strawberries. So there's a block of the first 10 houses in this block, houses 1 to 10. Here is the uh, incredible bike shed, which is all made out of recycled uh, railway sleepers. From above, it's kind of like the shape of a capital B, you can't quite see that here, um, but it fits over 100 bikes inside. And on top, it's called the Recycle Stage, because it's made from recycled materials, it stores cycles, and it's sort of a stage on top. It's got a top. Up here we've got sort of like a mini micro forest garden. There's various, I think that's New Zealand flax, which is very good for tying things up in, around the garden. And here we've got various dwarfing fruit trees, apples and pears. Another delicious goodies. It's all thriving at the moment. This is a plum tree, this great big one here. 
or rather the tree behind. Just behind it is a plum tree. Um, so yeah, this is the view from on top of the recycle stage. And let's go and look down at the other end. This is houses one to ten. I used to live in house eleven, this house here. This stage as well that was created from the what was dug out from the bike shed. There's Guillermo, he made the self-watering beds we saw earlier. We'll hear more about them in a bit. So there's more of the stage. I'll show you the ponds and the garden around the back. That window there on the right used to be mine. I lived there for a happy five years. And here is the beautiful ponds that Sanford has. Um, there's lots of wildlife that live in here. Goldfish and carp and frogs and newts. Nice bit of decking. Every time I come back to Sanford, something else has happened in terms of the constantly improving the space building more, enlarging the ponds or more mosaic tiling. This is all quite new, this has all happened since I moved out two years ago. Let's just nip back to the hind and see the main sort of vegetable production area. Here's a new wood storage solution, it's good to see. This wasn't here last time I was here. And here we have a load of raised beds and compost bins. Lots of food growing away and we've got various brassicas and broccolis and cauliflowers. This look like purple sprouting broccoli. A little herb bed with lots of different types of mints and oreganos. Lots more purple sprouting. Uh, some compost bins here. This is the neighbouring railway line, you know, which has recently been redone. It actually made our, the site, Sanford site, about a metre wider than it was previously. And these are the flats. So there are 14 houses, which, each which have 8 to 10 people in. And then there are 6 studio flats as well. And last but not least, there's this small little block here, which is might well be locked but in there is uh, as I think is a tool shed you've got a cob oven here which was made during a workshop one time some of the gardens behind the other side of the houses and under here it's probably locked but the bikes give you a clue this is the bike workshop but yeah, that's locked, so I can't actually show you in there, but that's another new addition to Sanford in the last couple of years. So there we have it, Sanford Housing Cooperative, South East London, SE14, 6NB is the postcode. Uh, I encourage you to come and check it out yourself, and if you're looking for affordable accommodation in London, this is a very good option. It's only about £50 a week, including all bills.